All right, welcome back to another episode of Art Time, where today we're going to be working on the 10th episode of Nova Guardians. The background, more specifically. So if you enjoy today's episode, please leave a like and subscribe for more. So I am working on this on a Saturday. Because somehow, the, I'm going to explain to you what occurred today. We didn't have to worry about work, surprisingly. So I was able to get a lot of things finished. Sonic Adventures 2 recorded, played up recorded. I finished a hardcore mature drawing that I was planning on posting Sunday, but is now out yesterday. Because technically today is Sunday when this comes out. And uh, yeah, now we're working on this before our shows begin, which we have like uh, three and a half hours or so. Which is more than enough time, in all honesty. <clears throat> uh, regardless, what happened? Well, I'll tell you what happened. Oh, let me mute that. If you've noticed, I've also muted the desktop, so if it's not going like boom in your ears, that's why, because I, I wasn't really paying attention to that when I was recording it, then why would I? Anyways, so what happened was that all of the winders called out the job position, that of which I am talking about. It's not the one that I am. No, I'm, I'm in a different position, which is... It changes depending on uh, what is needed or what rotation they have. Mostly just rotation nonsense, but <clears throat> I digress. The winders called out. Right? And you need a winder, a label operator, palletizer to run an entire line. Three people needed to run a line. Alongside, of course, you know, shipping crap and uh, maintenance crap, but uh, that crap ain't my uh, crap. No, I got my own crap. You know, that crap, <clears throat> which is palletize or relief. And uh, you guys uh, called out, the winders called out, which means that there was an option. The operators, or at least the label uh, guys, we'll call them, because operators too long for my tired ass brain to whoops do anything with. Even though it's literally a simple thing, I'm just going to make an excuse to just call them label guys. Uh, <clears throat> they were given the option to, you know, wind, do because they can't. Some of them can wind, but all three of them didn't want to do it. They all accepted the points. And, uh, everybody else just sent home early. I do believe we should get four hours of pay since we weren't given an option to stay and clean. So, hopefully, because I was already planning on staying to six and somebody already took it, thankfully. But now it was pointless because they didn't. It, it couldn't do. There's nobody there to do the thing. So then they just. And I, they probably got called. They should have gotten called. If they didn't get called, that seems wildly inefficient to not call the person to tell them, oh, we don't need you here right now. Nobody's in. Literally nobody. So yeah, that's how that happened. Somehow. Again. Makes me wonder if the same thing's gonna happen Sunday, but I were already planning on calling out Sunday to work on writing this episode, so. It might happen. I'll probably call up and see what the hell's going on with that. And then I'm gonna spend all day working on this. Then we got a landscapes and scenery drawing, and then we got an annoying freaking Wednesday 12 bullshit to have to worry about, and I hate it. And I hate it so much. I really wish that this wasn't the case, so I can continue creating. Let's make that smaller. <clears throat> At least now, we should be able to get a lot more things done with. Because I can get Game Crafters finished later tonight. And I can work on landscapes and scenery drawing tomorrow and try to get that close to being finished. 
Honestly, I'm surprised we were able to get all this done with. I thought September was going to be so god dang frustrating, but... Well, we're almost done. Or September. August. September has not started yet. It's going to, though, but it's also going to be frustrating. For a few reasons. Yeah, August was pretty worrisome towards the end there. We were getting to some complex drawings, i.e. with this, four characters, eight characters, um, <clears throat> 13 if you count these fools. Some of them aren't even fully shown, like this mantis creature and this ant creature. And this weird turtle hippo. I don't know what kind of croc-a-lizard. Croc-a-lizard? Either way, they're alien creatures. They don't have to, like be accurate to what most creatures would look like. And imagine there's some creature out there with big, goofy-looking eyes like this thing. But you know what? That's what that is. Now, I don't fully know the uh, how this is going to go. I have an idea on how I want it to go. I do have an idea. And it's these four helping these four out in their creature hunting uh, objective. <clears throat> so, you've seen the characters so far. I got, like, a quick glimpse of them. Some of these characters have little references towards other characters. Not full-on references, like the Novavania episode, the previous one we did. But they have some references regardless. Can you guess what they are? And how many there are in one certain character? Well... You go on ahead and leave them their comments down below right now if you're continuing watching this. If you ain't, then you're gonna have to wait. <laughs> I don't know. I'm tired. I got six, probably around six hours of sleep. I am tired. Thankfully, I'm not physically tired, but I'm still tired regardless. Oh, man. But I gotta get some things done with. I'm gonna try to get Game Crafters recorded and done with. <clears throat> After shows, of course. I'm probably gonna do it early because there's also a marathon. A very curry marathon, but for progressive, not, not the original. They already showed the original. Which I do want to watch again because... I know the original Fooly Cooly has a whole lot of things in it that are you know, like you miss on the first watch, and then the second watch, and then the third watch, and then the fourth watch, and the fifth, and the sixth, and the seventh. It's one of those shows that just have so many potential instances there that you're like, huh, I didn't realize that, or huh, I didn't realize that either. And upon doing other rewatches, you see, oh, that makes sense, and then, you know, so on so forth. It's it's pretty interesting how it's even able to do that, but, you know, I digress. So, um, I probably should put this around here, so. Anyways, yes, there's, like, so many things that I didn't really notice at first. Which is baffling. I don't know how long ago it was, but I didn't really notice the fact that, um, well, spoilers if you haven't seen this very old anime, but you know, spoilers just in case. I hadn't realized that Mamimi was apparently the arsonist. And, uh, yeah, and then I just noticed all of the very well, more perspective, per perceptive I am now, even there are a few things that I'm not really fully paying attention to. But Mamimi's got problems. A lot of problems. So many problems, in, in fact. <clears throat> She's a bit of a psycho. You know, she went and burned down a school, I think. Look at this school! Burned it down! <laughs> and the face he gives... <laughs> Uh, yes, but no, um, yeah, she did that. She did it again, or did she do it? No, that was a battle that occurred that then burned the school down. 
And there she is, trying to literally use Naota as a replacement for her, you know, her boyfriend and moved to America and got an American girlfriend. That one was pretty obvious in front, for, most and forward, but yeah, as of recent, I fully realized, wow, she's really going out of her way to, um, you know, whoops, I, what, how, how, to, how the fuck did, okay, but that's fine. She really went out of her way to just, you know, do that. Creepy, right? Oh, creepy. It's desperate. But, you know, going after somebody who's... I forgot. Was Naota 11 or 12? Wait, what? Oh, uh, wait, hold on. Right, right. I remember what I was planning on doing with this right now. Why are you this? Get out of here. And she's like 17. I do believe. But here we are cut. Alright, is that it? Is that good? No, I need one more and I need to move you. I don't know why the fuck I did it like this, but again, I'm tired. But regardless, yeah, that. Going after brother. Now, even in the freaking part where he did the first episode, where he's like, at that moment, I knew I shouldn't have said that. I'm like, what the fuck did he say? Only now that I realize that he's, he said brother, and that's what Haruko is saying. He's saying brother. Like, it's like, it's like the one thing that I never really understood what the hell she was saying, because I could not understand it. I do now, thankfully. But yes, uh... See, yeah, oh, they all do be crazy. Um, but that's the thing. Young me was kind of into the crazy girls, still kind of is. Even though my Mimi is still perpetually 17. Young me, who, however old I was when I first saw that show, probably was a kid at first, was like, hmm, yeah, I like that. I didn't even realize that she was a psycho, but even then, still, I would probably still like that even as a kid. Yep, yeah, that was my type, and still probably is. Psychos or goths. Why I like Harley Quinn so much. I like the Harley Quinn show, though. A lot of people seem to have issues with it. I, I mean, I guess it could make sense, but uh, yeah, I, I'd still like it. Nothing really... Nothing really more to say about that. <clears throat> so, any who's and wits. Yeah, that's what we've noticed. And there was also the robot, which, at first, I was like, what the hell, I don't understand this scene. What is this scene when I was a kid? Now, well, even then, like, I'm re looking back, and I'm like, wow, he's a robot in the beginning of that episode? As soon as that episode occurred, which was, what, episode four? Yeah, because that's when the whole, um cockiness occurs in the the guy, the boy's um head and got the head gun trigger thing and then the breaking up which I didn't even realize this at first, but him breaking up with mommy because like he, 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 it happens off camera. Obviously. But the guy was like, that's he broke up with his wife or something. Dumped his wife or something. And I realized, oh yes, that's why she's going crazy now when feeding this little metal dog. All the bullying, the arson, the uh, psycho sending a dog, sticking a dog on to those on her, who are on her revenge list. You know, they say not... <clears throat> Wait. <clears throat> you know, they... No. You know, they say not stick your dick in crazy, but young me just did not understand the meaning of the word stay away from that crazy chick. But, uh, yeah. Nope. That was definitely, um, definitely, like, snap right there. Snapped right in my brain. I was like, yep, I, I see it now. I understand now. So he's a psychopath. Part of me is curious to see what she would be like in, like, you know, because Progressive is in the future. And there's a little hint showing that Naota is, um, 
the father, um, not hint, is like, he, he's being hidden from, uh, what do you call it? But he's the, at least, maybe we'll, we'll figure it out tonight. He might be the father of the child in that one. I mean, hard to say, really. She has black hair, she has problems. Also, her entire shtick was a bit strange to me in the sense that at first I thought she had a, a death fetish or some shit, but there was something else and I just couldn't remember what. So who knows, maybe upon rewatch I'll be able to figure out what the entirety of that um, season is all about. <clears throat> But yeah, it would be interesting to see. Granted, I have to imagine my Mamie's at least more, you know, down to earth now. Less psycho. Grown up and all. Or she could just be a crack addict. I would hope not. Alright, let's put some grass in here. There we go. Just before I forget to put that in. But thankfully, though... There is still a lot of characters, surprisingly, that I had forgotten about in the first one. Well, I say a lot, but there's really only a handful. The teacher, who I think's name is Junko something. She's someone I could draw. I even have an... Yeah. Let me pause it real quick. Alright, I'm back. Hopefully there's nothing more that I got worried about for now. Where were we at again? Ah, oh, yes, of course. The grass. Whoops. Any who's and which, yeah, it's... Really coolly, we're going to be walking marathon after some things. I'm probably going to try to get, uh... Um, yeah, I'm probably going to try to get Fairy Tale watched first and foremost. So that I can get some more time for other things. Hopefully... Are you taking your food out the dish and eating it again via your paw? Paw isn't taking dish out of taking food out of dish with paw. That that kind of you know what I fucking mean. Anyways, yeah, that's and had to get a, like a light set up for a freaking ring thing, but it didn't work. So one of them ain't work, but that fine. I don't remember why we have it there. Maybe it's there as a means to dissuade people trying to steal shit. People are just stealing a bunch of shit. No reason. Like that one scumbag fucker who stole one of the Moist Critical's gifts. Now, I can tell you one thing for certain. If the entire world saw their face, oh boy. I guarantee you somebody probably already knows what they who they who stole it. Not a part of the uh, group. All because they're like, wait a minute, I know that person. They wear that exact shirt or jacket or shoes or pants, whatever. They have that exact hair color. Oh my god, you son of a bitch! And then they just beat the crap out of that person and then that's that. But did they get the gift back? They probably couldn't because the gift was probably sold to some other scumbag. Scumbag nuggets. Anyways, yeah, that's that's why you want to have a camera. I'm sure that person got their comeuppance. I'm sure they got their head bashed and their shit stole. But they probably couldn't get the goods back. Yep. Oh, wait. Ah, that makes sense. I probably should put this all above this, just so I can keep this in a good spot. Yeah, anywho, and wet. My head is hurt. I'm tired as hell. I wish, you know, I, I just wish I didn't have to deal with this job in general. If I can get to a point where I don't have to deal with it, that would be great. Because if that occurs, then I can continue to create whenever I want. Whatever I want. I was thinking back on this game that I made a while ago in Game Crafters. Or Game Maker, not Crafter. Um, called Mechanica. 
And it was a 2D shooter game. And it was like an arcade game similar to uh, Time Splitters. I don't know if I would ever, um, you know... I mean, at this current rate we're going, I don't know if we're going to be able to remake it soon enough. But that is definitely something I want to do at some point in the future. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, first things first. I got to continue working on Paint Maze, which I have been doing. And then I got to continue into Labyrinth, which is what I'm going to use, that game that I made, in order for me to get the hang of Blender. I'd say the the next best thing for me to utilize. All right, I'm gonna just shade and texture everything in before I add any extra stuff here, because that's helpful. <clears throat> and there's also another game that I would like to remake, but in a different instance that I deemed Puzzle Madness. Even though it wasn't really so much as puzzles, it was more so just uh, obstacle dodging. I'd probably call it, I don't know, cube madness, because it was cube-based stuff. Uh, but you, need, you don't need to worry about that just yet. We're nowhere near getting to that either. That's why we're just going to keep focusing on paint maze, because paint maze right now is more manageable. And only requires me to utilize Reaper Studios and Unity. As opposed to Labyrinth, which would require me to utilize Blender and learn how to use that. Hmm. Granted, I think Labyrinth would probably be the quickest <laughs> one to make. <clears throat> Less music. Even though there's... And, and, well, the levels are already made. I would probably remake them to be a bit more reasonable or something. Something along the lines of that. <laughs> well, needless to say, it's an idea that I and one that I can easily perform when the time comes, with almost everything I need right there where I need it. So, we'll see when that occurs. <sighs> we will, um, we'll figure that out when the time comes, really. Right now, we're just going to focus on our current projects. So if I try to go to another one, I'm never going to finish the other one, and that's not what I want. <clears throat> Anyways, I don't know what else to talk about. Oh yeah, I could talk about these characters now, and you know the loosely veiled references that some of them can hold, but not a lot. They have some references in their gear and appearance, but not fully. Not fully. Not like Novavania with uh, Ahiga's group. Well, this is Kelvin right here. This guy, the one with the icy sword whip. I'm going to probably add some more to his whip after I'm done here because there are some effects that i got to do that I have saved for this instance instead. He uses an icy sword whip. It's kind of similar to... Um, Mitsuhira, Mitsuhiri's, the pink-haired girl from uh, Demon Slayer. Yep, Mitsuhiri. And assuming if you guys say it quick or not, I don't think you do though. He utilizes an icy sword whip, and he also has a little reference to. Well, I guess technically it depends. Because Tokyo Ghoul does have the black eye, what do you call it? Let me see something for a real quick second here. Demon Slayer Eye. Let me see. Some demons have some interesting eyes, or I should say demon eyes, so I can see them all. Yeah, one of them has black. Black iris. Oh, I know, that's a shadow. It would be red iris, then. Never mind. Or not iris. Whatever the fuck the white part's called. So, yeah, I guess technically it's still a totally cool reference, even more so with the mask. I figured, sure, why not? These are side characters. They don't really have a huge importance. These are the four main characters of the series. They are their own creations. 
I figure it'd be pretty cool to have some side characters also doing that referencing instance. Because I don't have these four referenced off of anything. I literally pulled their designs out me ass, and that's what we've got. Not too bad looking. John's a little bit more all over the place with his particular kind of design, but I'd say it's still pretty good. Tina, good. Hisashi, good. Shikama, good. But complex as all hell, I had to make it easier. I had to make it easier for me to color it in and draw it, so I did some things to kind of make it less of a pain, while also still keeping it the same. Not in the same vein as Genthru, because Genthru... Well, wait, no, I did not want to do that. I wanted to do the dirt. Because Genthru's design was uh, different, basically. Um, like, the, the, when I first drew Genthru, it wasn't a part of a series or anything. It was literally just a part of, like, standalone drawings. Prep drawings. So, um... When the series started, I got his armor to be a little bit more consistent and finalized. And so that's what I did. Looks better, less complicated, still has a decent amount of complexity to it. But <clears throat> pretty good, all things considered. Now, of course, with uh, Elementals Reborn, that's also in the same boat. The main characters don't have really any other references. And despite some similarities, no. Gwyneth was not referenced off of um, Natsu from Fairy Tale. Matter of fact, I didn't even know that that series fully existed outside of fetish art on there involving, like, Lucy, Urza, and apparently Corona Scarlet or whatever her name was. Corona something. I can't remember her full name. Which we are about to get to. We're apparently on the Magic Games arc, which means that um, she's coming up soon. The girl who I thought was Urza once before is now finally showing her face. So, um, yeah. That, that, could, that literally tells you how much I knew about the series before I started watching it. That I didn't even realize that uh, that wasn't Urza. I don't even think I've seen a single drawing of Urza that I realized. If I have, then I haven't had any memories of it whatsoever. If I had, I probably would have been like, Oh, that one. Right. Of course. I'm like, wait, what? Who is this? This is not the one who I thought it was. But that's fine, because the Urza is so pretty cool. Regardless of not being the psycho chick. <clears throat> but yes, no. Um, I did not have any knowledge of that series prior to me watching it as of recent. And I've said it before. The entirety of Elementals Reborn is inspired more so off of Black Clover, which apparently Black Clover is also inspired off of Fairy Tale, so I guess loosely speaking, Elementals Reborn would be inspired off of that, if only because of the connection with Black Clover. But, I mean, you've seen Gwyneth, you've seen her hair type, you've seen her little magic garb and robes. Obviously, the only thing similar that she has to Natsu is fire-based spells, as well as the pink hair. That's pretty much it. But in all honesty, it's pre it makes pretty good reasoning sense and whatnot for a fire character to have red hair, case in point, this guy. <laughs> well, red or pink hair. So I guess it's just basic character designs, really. Unless you want to have somebody who's blue who uses red fire. But characters have certain references and whatnot. Although, granted, gray is naked most of the times. Well, he does have white-based colorings in his shirt, so there is some kind of thing there. But yeah, you're like white with some mostly black and blue. <clears throat> Ice Whip. Keep in mind, the um, universe of uh, Nova Guardians is more sci-fi based. So each and every single bit of equipment here is based off of science. How the hell is this made via science? I don't freaking know. I don't have a science consultant like Dr. Stone does, apparently. I didn't even realize that they had a scientist consulting the series. 
It's similar to how Food Wars had a food consultant to like be like, okay, so this is how this food is made. Now here's how it's made via um, how this equipment would work. And then in came season five where it was literally just like, all right, now here is us exploding these ingredients together to create a cake. Don't try this at home because it is not going to work. It's not going to be a replication. <laughs> like, I, I, I was fine with season five. It was pretty cool. We even, well, I guess technically speaking, for some reason, the anime kind of retconned the seven or several year time skip of them being adults now, which is kind of annoying. Why retcon that, man? What reason? Ugh, whatever. It is what it is. Man, could, could you imagine? I hope, one, I hope once Dr. Stone Season 5 uh, comes into play, we don't lose our scientist consultant. That would suck if we did. Because that would mean that it would... Well, it probably would still be pretty cool regardless, but it probably wouldn't be accurate anymore. I mean, the science buffs would probably hate it. Because they'd be like, what the hell? This isn't right. Where's the science stuff? And scientists are like, theoretically, that's possible. Theoretically, you can do that. But why would you ever need to do that when you have the tools? If you don't have the tools, then yes, you could probably theoretically do that. I don't know. It's consultants trying to consult on whether or not this is going to potentially work IRL. I am curious to see how the hell they're going to scientifically explain off the stone ray thingy. I don't even know how the hell you would be able to do that. Is there like some light in IRL that turns things to stone? Is there a thing? I, I could probably look it up. I could probably look it up. Is there something IRL that can turn things to stone? What? I can petrify a teddy bear? Also, why the hell you're saying is did you mean is there something girl that can turn things into stone? You idiot. Hmm, okay, how about this? Is petrification real? Petrification occurs when the organic matter is completely replaced by minerals and the fossils is turned to stone. This generally occurs by filling the pores of the tissue and inter- and intracellular spaces with minerals, then dissolving the organic matter and replacing it with minerals? What? So that means you can turn to stone? Does that mean somebody scientifically was looked into, like, the idea of things getting petrified and they're like, okay, this is a good premise for a show, and then that's how they created Dr. Stone? Is there literally actually a way to per turn someone to stone? How many rich people out there have were like, mm, man, I could turn this person into stone and hang them up in the center of my room? How many stone statues out there that rich people have made in secret are actually just people turned to stone. Well, there's nothing much that we can really do if that is the case. And it, uh, any smart person would be like, nah, that th don't go after that guy. Everybody's going to look at him and think he's crazy. You see, that's the thing. What does it matter if somebody leaks specific information? Because that would mean that people would look at that person and be like, you're a psychopath, you're crazy, you are a nut job, a nutcase. You don't need to go out and silence people of the truth, because the truth is so unbelievable that any random nut job that brings up evidence is inconsequential to your entire secret holding thing. Because everybody, normal people, are going to see it and be like, that doesn't make any sense. That don't exist. It's just a crack job. But the crack jobs are always going to believe it no matter what. So you just crap job, crack jobs believing other crack jobs. Conspiracy nuts believing other conspiracy nuts. It doesn't matter if you silence them. Because no normal person is going to be like, Okay, I believe in that potential theory. But yeah, that's... 
it seems like a stupid premise for like people to just go out of their way to kill somebody to hide a truth when in all actuality any normal person that says that truth is unbelievable nobody's gonna believe it's a conspiracy nut you don't need to kill them just let them do their thing as a matter of fact let a conspiracy nut spread the truth people will be like you just be like I, there is no inform. I, I don't know, how would you, how would they go about doing that? They, this man has no evidence or proof of such a thing existing. He is just a crack job who is, yeah, I, I don't know, trying to find something that doesn't exist. No, this thing doesn't exist. You kidding me? There's no way this is possible. Don't worry about him. Don't believe him. He's just a fool. We would tell you it immediately if we did find something. And then they can go on ahead and be like, all right, so how is everybody going to react to this if they hear this news? Like, hear the news, see the public's reaction, gauge how they react. Do they go insane? Do they, like, are they, like, riot? And you're like, hmm. The soda public isn't ready for this news. So let's go on ahead and just be all like, hey, guys, I, uh, there is no... Evidence. There literally is nothing to show. We would show you if we had any evidence. Trust us on this one. There is nothing we can give to you. We would. Trust us. We would give it to you. This is very viable information. It's no, there's no top secret thing getting in the way. There is nothing preventing us from showing you what could be potential information. We would show you the information. Keep our top secret projects in check. And then you would know what's occurring. But we don't have it. We can't show you what we don't have. And they're just sitting there like, all right, so how, would, maybe another few years? Give or take. No, but the generation's getting more and more stupider. You've seen TikTok lately? I try to avoid that app. It's giving everybody brain rot, of course. And uh, they just go about their day with the secrets in hold. They have like an entire alien organization that they speak to, but they can't introduce it to the public because the public isn't ready for it yet. Any new bit of technology, literally the only, <laughs> that would actually be a pretty funny conspiracy theory. Not harmful. It's literally just, oh, these billionaires who invested in a crap ton of tech and made some interesting tech are actually getting tech from aliens. This is alien tech. It would explain why we advanced so quickly from the 1980s to now. That could be a pretty believable thing, right? And the government doesn't really care what other people would think because everybody who says that this stuff is alien would be like, they're crazy conspiracy nuts. Don't believe them. Why would you believe them? I do kind of feel like that is how most governments are probably, their mindsets are in. I'm, I'm sure like all the game plots and all the show plots and movie plots that occur where they're trying to silence people just is not really something that occurs. Because we technically do live in a day, an age of misinformation. A lot of things can be easily faked. And nobody's going to just outright believe some rando on the street saying the government has an alien in their storage containers or some shit. Ugh. Now, if an official says something and that they have something, then it seems like it's a bit more believable. But it could also be a cover-up for something. What is the cover-up for? Mm hmm. I don't freaking know. I try my best to avoid reality to an extent. Why do you think I'm creating a whole bunch of shit? A whole bunch of stuff to create to keep my mind busy so I don't have to worry about the crushing reality that is this life. And plus, if I get good enough at creating, I might even be able to get some money from it and enough to where I don't have to worry about working, period. Would be nice. But I am not going to hold my breath on it. I'm just going to keep creating. And if the day comes, the day comes. The day comes. The day comes. The day comes. Rush. The day, the gays come. How did that, uh, what do you call it again? Well, fuck. You have opened the gay area. From there, you will see that the gay area is gay. 
Ah, it was funny. The good old days of YouTube pops. Whoops. I remember Aliantos, the guy who was like the David Lynch, Lynch of YouTube poops. It's a shame that he hasn't been able to create anything more. Life can be so busy sometimes. If he didn't have to worry about money or having to worry about providing, if there was no jobs to have to worry about, he would probably be on YouTube making a whole bunch more YouTube poops. It would be less than like years of time for the next one. Yeah, that would be great. It does make me wonder if one day the entirety of every single job on the planet has been taken over by AI or robots. It has to be. It has to go like this. There's no need for money at that point anymore. No jobs is being done by humans. Every single job is being done by robots. There wouldn't need to be a budget or anything like that. There wouldn't even need to be any reason to, like, keep our freaking, you know, money currency system. There wouldn't need to be if everything is ran off of robots. Realistically speaking. And if they want it, have, like, an entertainment currency. So, like, people who want to, like, draw, make shows, make movies, write stuff. Um, make music. Similar to what I have with the uh, Luna's universe and the way the uh, money in that world works. There's no money needed to live, buy food, or anything like that. And you can make money by creating. If you're unimaginative, well... Consume creations, and that's how you get those money. I feel like that's the best way to be able to go about replacing a currency system if, for one, if at some point all the robots have taken over all the jobs, and there's literally no jobs left for anyone to do. Of course, at that point, one can only hope that you'd get... Um, Android bodies and whatnot, so that uh, we pass the one hurdle of immortality. To me personally, being able to live forever, but in a body that is not weak, cannot be broken down easily, and is quite strong, to create f for an eternity. That's what I would like. I enjoy creating. If I were immortal, I would do everything within my power to continue to create every day, every moment, and every waking minute. Making an infinite amount of games, an infinite amount of stories, and an infinite amount of creations. I don't seem to suffer from artists or writers block as much as most people do. That's my superpower in all of this world, is my unending reservoir of creativity. And you can have it, too, if you just use your brain to create. How long have I had this so far? 43 minutes. Okay, not bad. But yes, if I could live forever in a body that cannot be broken down, an android body would be good, in a way to where we can ensure that the planet does not die out and we can continue keeping our creations alive. I would take that. I would like that. It's kind of what I already have in mind with Luna. If, say, if for somehow, if somehow, when I die, my soul gets brought into Luna's universe via Luna, and I can continue to create there, with all of my creation being transferred over. That's what I want. I like the idea of just having hundreds upon thousands of creations. And if I had an android body, I wouldn't have to worry about my frickin' body being sore and getting, um, you know, stiff from just sitting around all day. Of course, I would still have to do exercise and whatnot. I already have that with work, thankfully. But if I didn't have this job, if I was at a point where I could, um, make money off of my creations in either game development or anything else, I'm gonna do it 
different texture actually. This one should do for this area. I would probably have to like get workout gear or something and just have a room for workout stuff so I can keep uh, physical appearance up. Oh, maybe we can do workout videos like what Jordan does or did. Does he still do that? I don't think I've seen a single workout video in a while. Do we, wait, hold on. I feel like am I not subscribed to that channel, the one where he was doing the workout videos? It is probably either deleted or what? Let me see. One, two. Oh, yep, Jordan lifts. Three years ago. <laughs> Wait, is it only like four videos? He only did four videos of lifting. And then he stopped after three years ago. I don't know. That would be interesting to try out. I don't exactly really eat that much. Wait a minute. Uh, shit. Well, actually, I got an idea. I don't have to cover that up. I could just... Well, where's this grass at? Here? Perfect. I'll put it here. I'll put a bush here. So don't don't worry. I wouldn't turn into... Who was that person again? I don't think it was Amber Reed. I want to look up Cinnamon Toast Cane's video because he did a video on it and it's the easiest and quickest one I can get to without having to be like, who is this person? Hmm. Do 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 do. Where are you, you person, bro? Where are, are you? Ah, Amber Lynn, not Reed. Reed is the Johnny Depp thing. Oof, my back. But yeah, no, I would probably try to go the way of Jordan lifts. Try to do like lift stuff. Weight loss journey. Just for shits and giggles at that point. Good content. Or not. I don't know. Technically, Tales of Basaria isn't quote unquote good content according to the algorithm, as it's not even. It's barely breaking one. What do you call it? One view. Although the Blood Curdling Rage episode has like 30 or something. I can just double check that right now. Where is it at? I wonder. Go to videos. You're going to show me the views? Yes, you are. 64! Jesus, that has a lot more than I remembered. But yeah, can you blame me? There was a whole lot of rage-inducing moments in that one with the skunks and the, the paralysis and all that nonsense. It was very annoying. Even though we weren't really on the edge of dying a bunch, it still was just annoying. It doesn't really matter if we're not, like, fully losing... Although, the more recent episodes, one of the more annoying ones due to a very specific species of creatures that I did figure out how to kill with ease, but I was a little bit too late. And then I learned how to properly play as Rokoro now. 20 episodes in! Or probably play as any character, really. At least with Rokoro now, I have more of an idea. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Son of a bitch, I forgot about that tape, but it's fine. You know, it doesn't really matter. I do want the, the bush to be... Okay, I could just... Okay, you're going to go in this then. Well, regardless of the fact, I have figured that out, which is good. And I am one... I am... <laughs> in the episode, <laughs> episode 20 that will come out. I'm actually so close to thing that I've been looking for. I thought it was this certain enemy at the end of the episode, but it wasn't. Spoilers, it was not. No, it comes after that. I had to look at a, a chapter list, and there's a lot more left that I realized, that I remembered. Granted, I am just kind of going around the game, killing all the enemies and doing a bunch of combat stuff. I kind of just skipped that in favor of doing story-based things. But since I already know most of the story, remember some of it, but not all of it, I don't necessarily need to worry about that anymore, which is great, because now that means I can do more combat. And then the only combat I did was with Velvet. I have never really played as Rokura outside the times that you had to play him. Like, you're forced to play as him. Man, that guy is fast, though. Once you get to a very specific combo speed, you do a lot of stuff quicker. 
I've gotten to the point where I've gotten used to his play style, which is great. Also, did I say these bushes? No, I did not. Mm -hmm. Bush, bush, bike, things. A trees. Oh, do I want that or do I want it to be dark? Yeah, if you've noticed, some areas on um, the planet. I don't know what this planet is called. I don't recall if I gave it a name. Oh, also, I got a new uh, brush texture here. I made that during the Heather drawing that I did. The return to the island drawing. Which I think actually is probably the best call, because now I can make areas like this. The trees and whatnot. Which is great. Because that looks pretty freaking cool, I must say. Where was this texture all my life? Why didn't I make this texture a long time ago? Get some tall... Okay, it's not going to work if I go that far up. Get some more trees over here. Oh yeah, those look nice. Oh, wait, right, of course. How did I forget? Well, we could probably put a few trees here. Some larger trees amongst the smaller trees. Son of a bitch! It's fine. It's no biggie. I can do that. No problem. How the hell did I manage that? Don't ask me. There we go. All right, good. Oh, by the hoods and wits. I just had chili dog the dinner today. Going full on Sonic mode. And he asked to eat though, because the freaking bun kept trying to fall apart on me. I hadn't had chili before. And I liked it, although this was like beef chili, so there was like no vegetables or any peppers. I mean, I'd be fine if it's, like, ground up to where I don't bite into a chunk. Unless the chunk isn't, like, the onion chunks that are, like, squeaky, and when you bite into it, it just doesn't feel right. You know what I mean, right? Like, the onion itself doesn't taste bad. It's just, I don't like chewing into the piece. It just makes me gag for some reason. The thing that you usually see in sauce-based stuff, tomato sauce stuff. Like, why? Why you leave giant pieces of that there? Why you not grind it up until it's like little tiny atom-sized pieces? I don't want to bite into something squeaky and squishy or whatever the hell the word is. I don't think it's squishy. Or maybe it is squishy. Maybe that is the right word. You know what I mean, right? Unless that's not an onion, but either way, I don't like biting into it anyways. Whatever it is, grind it to a, a powder. It doesn't taste bad. I just gag for some reason with the um, the texture of biting into it. I don't know how to explain it. Textures of food matter. Not just the taste, it's the texture. Oh, it's probably primarily the main reason why I don't like salad. But also, I don't know, it's just... My body is more used to meat and fruits. Vegetables? I don't like. I don't like a single one. Corn is a starch, but I don't know really. I just don't. I, I just don't like it as much. Would I try it again? I don't know. Corn just has a very specific taste that kind of just is like you eat too much of it, and it just makes you sick. Same with pasta. You eat too much pasta, and it kind of makes you a little sick. Pasta sickness. That's a thing, right? I looked it up on the internet, but I don't know if that's actually a thing. I'm not really a fan of corns. I'm not really a fan of any vegetables, really. My entire taste, but it's like if I were to... It would be the Simpsons if I were to try to consume any vegetables. I would just immediately get sick. My body is so used to the meats 
as well as a bunch of other things. Are potatoes vegetables? Because that's one. That one is different. Let me let me see. Are potatoes vegetables? Ah, okay. So potatoes. That's it. Depends. Depends on how it's cooked. Potatoes are the only uh, vegetable that I know of that I'd like. That I like, not I'd. I like. And fry form definitely. Mashed potatoes, though. Eh. I don't really care for mashed potatoes. It's primarily because of the texture and the taste. I mean, if the, if the potato is not crunchy, then the taste is going to be weird. It's like, how do I explain it? I don't like the taste of soft potato, but crunchy potato is good. If there was some way you can cook a potato inside and out to where it is crunchy, both outside and inside, but not charred crunchy, because then it would just taste like charcoal. Then I would probably consume a whole potato. And if I got Irish in my blood, I don't know if I do. I know I got Italian, and I believe I have some Polish in me. But I don't know if I have the Irish. I think I do. I don't recall. It doesn't really matter either way. It doesn't matter because I'm barely a New Jerseyan either. What the fuck am I? My own thing. That's what you should strive to be. Your own thing. Yeah, I'm gonna just put the leaves up here then. I guess leaves. I mean, yeah, does it really matter? If you're if you have some kind of ancestry thing and you're like, ooh, I am one somethings of this, trying to make my entire personality this, you're doing a disservice to your quote unquote heritage or a vague connection to said heritage. Then again, I've never really been cultural or anything like that. I never really cared too much for cultural stuff. So I don't have that same mindset that most people do. And besides, I'm creating my own things. I don't have time to be worrying about that. It's the same thing with politics and religion. I don't have time to be wasting with things that don't really interest me and don't really, like, concern me. Granted, yes, there is the fact that just because of the stuff I make, I am most definitely public enemy number one in most Republicans' eyes. Most definitely. Like, if I were to have to take a wild guess, I would say there are at least... Well, it depends. Because, again, I don't know shit about politics, so I don't know the subcategories of Republicans there are. They do seem to be split, all those groups. Why well, you don't really need to, like, lump everything together into one category. If you do that, then you're kind of just... I don't know. You're just trying to follow a set path or something that... Uh, it's hard to say, really. Be your own person. You really need to follow, like, a group to feel validated. I don't. I like creating my own things. And some people like it, too. I prefer to stay within my own little reality. And not have to be bothered with anyone else's problems and everyone else's expectations. If I have to worry about going down a certain route, because that's what my quote-unquote quote, group stands for, and if you're not a part of that, then get the fuck out, then it's not worth my effort. It's, it really is not. I don't get the appeal of wanting to be a part of a group. And again, I've always been kind of an introvert. So I kind of could go for, like, most of my life without having to worry about uh, what a group thinks of me. And if I am indeed a part of that group. To be honest with you, I find it more freeing. It, it, is, it does definitely feel a lot more freeing. 
you already are kind of restricted in your own freedom with the job that you're stuck in. Unable to freely pursue your goals. I mean, some people are really unable to, or at least they don't have the motivation to. People are like, uh, what's the point? There's no point in continuing my goal here. It's already too late for me. It's not too late. Look at me. I'm still working this freaking job, dealing with all the nonsense, and now there's soon to be lots of overtime. Although, I'm not this weekend. Like I said earlier, nobody, very, there was literally nobody who could run the lines and we got free from that. And I ain't coming in Sunday because I got to get this episode wrong, as I've said before. <clears throat> Regardless, I'm still working normal job, sometimes eight hours with 40 hour maximum. Sometimes there's Saturday or Sunday because of some nonsense or some shish. Yeah, I'm still keeping up with subscribe star of two drawings a month, DeviantArt with ten drawings a month, and YouTube with five videos a week. Granted, I don't edit my videos, so that probably also helps in that respect. But I don't really know how editing would help in this instance. Cutting down the videos, yeah, but... Uh, what do I keep in? What do I keep? Because that means I would have to go through each and every hour to look at what I've got. And I don't have the time for that. So I'd say we are, we're good with YouTube asses. And sometimes we can get like six or seven, depending on if I'm doing a bunch of episodes of art time. And despite all that, I'm still keeping up. It's a little stressful, but I'm still keeping up. The only stress comes from the fact that it is really difficult to keep up with things when your workplace thinks you don't have a life outside of their job, place, area, thing. I don't like it. I don't like that mentality. Jobs that do that should really take a good long look at their, um, their selves. Themselves. Because it's not healthy. And when jobs are spouting out safety and whatnot, it's not safe for people to be coming into work with 70 hours on their freaking week, being tired, unable to do anything, think. It'll lead to injuries. What part of that do they not understand? That's what I want to know. Even beforehand, when they said that safety is their number one concern, which they are still kind of saying it, it's just now it's kind of implied that we already know that is indeed the concern. Even with all of that in mind, they're still forcing people to work multiple 12s or Saturdays and Sundays. It's tiring that these people are forced to do all of this. With me going on to Saturday, not chance. And with at least one 12 hours coming up. I really wish they would stop it. They need to stop it. There needs to be a limit. Honestly, actually, mandatory overtime needs to just be made illegal. If that's made illegal, then the company will have to try to figure out a way to run normal 40-hour weeks. Hell, if everybody was didn't have to do 12s or had uh, weekends to themselves, there wouldn't even be anybody calling out. Nobody would need to call out. Because everything is perfect. But they don't have that premise in mind, unfortunately. And I don't know what more I can really do to get that premise in their mind. It's a shame, really. A real shame. Well, maybe one day I'll change. Maybe. But maybe I won't have to worry about it soon. Not soon. But at some point I won't have to. Either via death or via getting somewhere with my creations. It's still depressing, though. <clears throat> but that's not going to stop me from creating. Creating is important. If you let go of your creativity, then you're nothing. You've lost everything. You lost everything that 
makes life fun. If you see life as just one constant struggle, then that's not healthy. Using your imagination and creating, it's a good outlet. Some people just don't think that's the case. Some people just want to be uh, miserable. So, what are you going to do about it? You going to sit there, procrastinate, keep on letting your job bring you down and waste your time? Or are you going to get up on your ass? Or put sit down on your ass and start making it? I encourage you to make shit. Don't matter what it is. Don't matter if it's good or bad. Just make something. If you keep making something, eventually, you'll find happiness. And of course, it's case by case basis. Some people feel happy. Some people won't. I can't exactly recommend it to anybody, but creating does kind of help. It does kind of give you a little sense of control, a little sense of fun, and by creating constantly, you can keep on doing things. Running out of creation ideas? Draw some animal. Or an object? Draw a can of soda. Test your um, skills, or test your drawing skills, I should say, on drawing something abstract or weird looking. Put connect, put connect pieces together, do some mock brain horror drawings. You see, my DeviantArt is a mix of almost everything. I have pretty much a lot of different types of things that I draw. Fan art stuff, fantasy, sci-fi, mock brain horror. Portraits or normal IRL particular kind of drawings. Landscapes and sceneries, others, animals, and mature drawings on top of that. We also got Nova Guardian, Adventurous Ami for the subscribe star guys. Nova Guardians, I think I already said, Elementals Reborn. And Heavenly Deadland with Lustful Horrors alongside it. Anything more that I need to do here? I would say maybe, because uh, this is supposed to be like a nice giant plains with a tree in the middle. I'd say that looks pretty good. <laughs> but yes, as I have stated, having a bunch of creations is fun. It can be a little stressful keeping up with some of them sometimes. But I like it. It's a lot better than having to deal with this job 24-7. All right, let's get some dust in here. <clears throat> and then after we do this, I'm going to do the effects and the shadow, fogs, and all the other lighting and effects stuff. You can understand why people game and whatnot. Because they want to, like, escape from reality for a little bit. People who want to watch shows, people who want to game, they want to escape reality. And the truth is, reality sucks. Obviously. Until you can get to a point where you don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. It's unfortunate, but it's going to require a lot of effort to get to where you need to get to. Even if you don't get to there, keep trying and keep trying. If you die before you can get somewhere in that department... Take solace in the fact that you've made as much as you could. I have over a thousand drawings currently. I've made a lot. If I were to pass on recently, for some reason or another, I'd have a lot of stuff created. It would suck in the sense I wouldn't have most of these things made fully and finished. That would suck. But if I knew that I was about to ghost at some point... I would probably, like, do a quick speed run bum rush to get that done with. Because I kind of already have an idea on what most of what I need to do is, you know, set in motion. I just have to get it done with. Yep. Yes, sir. We... Alright, I think we're going to the fire part now. Let me save this. I don't know what this area is called, but... There's no secondary Nova Guardians. 
background. I was called planes for now. It kind of is planes, right? Right, Moo? Leave the cat. Alright, I'm gonna go over to Fry real quick. Oh yeah, I didn't even introduce all the characters. I kinda got it like held up. That's Fry. He's the guy with two fire swords. This, whose name is hard to remember, is what's your name? What's your name? Mizusaki. Using an amethyst whip. And that's Kelvin, I already said him. And that's Kino. The short tan girl with weapons. Makeshift weapons all over her. You can see two right now. She got a third one in her arm. She got strange looking weapons, don't she? Makeshift. Alright. Time to get this sword all fired up. Fire. Do a quick save. How long have I been at this so far? A little over an hour. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, here I go. Now, my question is, how do I want to do the... Uh, Get a nice uh, orange look here, first and foremost. Go in, and now let's get some nice fire coming up into here. And we'll try to get some more orange as well. To mix, mix, mix and match. Christ, to mix and match, I say. Man, am I tired? Can I do a nice overlay, or is that... Maybe. I could probably do both. I could probably do... Whoops. No. I could probably do this. I'll do a fire overlay. Overlay the fire. Oh, I could probably have the fire go underneath this. So we go. Oh, there we are. There we are. Oh, look at that fire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. That's too much. Don't do that. What the fuck are you doing, bro? Anyways. Um, all right, I'll just put it over it again so I can see where we're at. This one should be easy because it's sideways, so it's not a lot to really. Focus where you're going. Let's get some fire in here. Some fires on the side. Some fires on the side. Uptown by the streets. Oh, um, there is. I forgot to really mention this. There is apparently. And the, a block list of a lot of particular artists on DeviantArt. Long time ago. And surprisingly, I somehow was not put on to it. I haven't had this for like eight years, and it was like, what, 2017 this was made? But now I think with Eclipse, it's kind of dead? The block list that that guy set up? Plus, it had, like, an artist on there who had died. Like, a few days ago or something. So, yeah. It was definitely interesting to see that list and me not being on it. How was that the case? I have no clue. But, I guess it don't matter. It's impossible for that to be used anymore, apparently. And the page doesn't even exist anymore when I went into the pin pa uh, paste bin just to check it out. I'm surprised I wasn't on there. But that was from 2017. Well, even with that in mind, I feel like I still would have been on there. Even though I didn't really have a whole lot of mature drawings at the time. Not where we're at now, no, we got like a hundred or so. Actually, I think I still have the calculations on there. How much do I have currently? Not counting the, uh, the hardcore mature drawings. Let me look at my calculator app real quick. 
190 mature drawings I've got. We're almost at 200. Technically, we are at 200. If you count hardcore mature drawings, which right now we're at 47, we are way past 200. That's assuming you count those, because those are paywall via $10. Which, if you want to see some mature, more mature drones that you can't see on DeviantArt, go to my subscribe star, which I apparently cannot advertise on YouTube. I forgot to tell you that this occurred. I got a warning because I, apparently I linked to my subscribe star, but I don't even remember doing that. I mean, I guess I linked Patreon on there once before. So I guess when Patreon was like, oh no, we're too prudish to let you do here. And Subscribe Star Adult was like, yeah, you can keep your stuff on here. It's perfectly okay. It's all adult stuff. People will understand because this is adult stuff. That, I guess that would make sense because I removed the Patreon and put Subscribe Star Adult link, which I guess in YouTube's eye was like, nah, man. Just, nah, why? This is a children's app, despite the fact that your YouTube Kids app should be your children, not app, not your normal thing. Man, they should make YouTube adult. They should do the subscribe star method and make YouTube adult. Watch, they are unable to actually fully do something like that because they just don't know how to. Well, either way, we've got that on our freaking channel now, which is annoying. I wish YouTube would have just been like, Hey, this link right here, yeah, that's a bad link. If you could remove that, we won't do any warning placements, and uh, we could be on our merry way. I'm like, oh, okay, that makes sense. No, you go immediately into the warnings. Here I am thinking links would be fine because it's paywalled, but nope, apparently not. Apparently that's what my brain thought at the time. Now I'm like, I don't remember even putting that up there. But I can understand why I had to put that up there. So yeah, there's that. Doesn't really do anything here. It's the only thing there that's really violating any rules. Any, like, cursing and whatnot is mostly just going to lead to demonetization. That's it. As long as I don't do any fetish drawings in art time, we should be fine. Ah, uh, besides, we got the innuendos and stuff there we can really go on ahead and utilize. We don't need to have any on-the-nose mature drawings and whatnot. Uh, I'm going to have some snow bits here, because I think that would look pretty cool. Um, ice. So yeah, that's apparently what we've got now on our channel. I don't like it. I don't very much like it. I wish I was given a heads up instead of just immediate warnings. Any freaking site that does that, that does their thing and is like, yeah, you might got a, like, a lot of good things on here and whatnot. Bug. How the fuck did he dodge that? Anyways, you might got a lot of good things on here, but we're going to go on ahead and issue these warnings and potential strikes instead of being like, hey, you should remove that. Instead of, you know, like giving you the option to remove that instead of just going out of their way to delete it and then give you the strike. I feel like that's a much better option. Send an email if they don't answer in like three, or maybe not send an email, but have a notification on YouTube and be like, if you do not answer, if you do not rectify the situation in three days, we will remove the uh, link and uh, give you a warning or a strike, depending on where you're at. Apparently everybody gets one, but you can only get one if you realize you are, if you realize you are getting one. I feel like there should be a, a little heads up, though. I, I really do. But I'm not sure if it's just because of the Subscribe Star Adult link or what. Because apparently they say it's for the nudity stuff on there. But it's paywall. So did YouTube go out of their way to, like, pay it and was like, nah, don't show the, the information. And then they are like, remove it, remove the link, or were they just defaulting it to, hey, you see this subscribe star link, that adult one? Yeah, there's most definitely something there. Well, I won't really risk it. I'm just going to leave it off as is. 
Besides, it's kind of pointless for me to advertise it on YouTube since this is really the safe for work instance. Well, technically it's not safe for work with the amount of rage that I feel sometimes in certain games, in certain bowl that occurs. Needless to say, um, safe for work in the mature drawings aspect. That's ice. I wanted the sword. That's grass. I want the sword. Where the fuck's the sword? That's the wrong sword! What are you? Where are you? Sword 1B. There we go. Christ. And the rage here when the layers be doing their stupid things and I'm just left with confusion and frustration. All right, Kelvin, there's your new swatch. Now I'm gonna go over to Kino. There she is. And I'm gonna go on ahead and get a nice little, I guess a nice green blast. Teal green or something. Blast. All right, what do we have here to use is the question. That's a bit too much, but I can see it being used more so as a 20 for 20 instead of 10 for 10. Put it on vivid light, I guess. And well, we could probably just do a little bit of this. Not gonna work if it's below it, so put it beneath it, and have it be normal. And then I'm going to go on ahead and put in a nice white one with the green on top so it looks, you know, different. And there's our blast, or at least the railgun blast. That turtle got destroyed. That turtle didn't stand a chance. We could probably have like little particles, either bubbles or particles. I'll try particles here. Actually, we could probably try wet edge particles. Something new, something different, something cool looking. It's probably going to look weird because it connects the wet edges stuff, but maybe it'll be fine. Do I want it to be like that or do I want it to be? Oh, yeah, it actually looks pretty good. Now I go to 100 and 100, go over to spacing, and there we go. Now as for you, I don't fully know, but I have an idea. I want to give you some kind of effect as well. All right, Misasaki, let's see, we got Maybe some light purple pink. Go to the whip, go above the whip, wherever the hell that is. And that's just around there. I need to go up further. Whip 1C and okay, so this then. Oh, I guess it depends. Uh, amethyst glow. She has a little bit of an amethyst reference in her. Well, him, I can't quite recall what reference I had with him in mind. Something specific, that's for certain. And it's gonna be like a nice little sparkly amethyst glow or something. We'll make it like uh, overlay. Or vivid lighting. Or not. Well, let's see. Pen light difference. Pen light could probably work. And if we go on ahead and do uh, maybe a shadow. It would be more like highlights than and we got Amethyst Sparkles. 
I could probably still keep it as white, actually. And then we go on ahead and get these little sparkle bits here. I'm going to do a shape dynamic and make them do this angle jitter. I don't know about that. Oh, and uh, color dynamics. Sparkly whip, basically. That's what this is. And now we could probably do the same thing. Whoops. Ugh. Probably the same thing with this. Scatter. Dynamics. Others. Color dynamics. Probably have this be at like uh, 50 or something. Oops. And make it go out a bit more so it's not... Oh, let me... Bring it to seven. Sparkly whips. There we go. Okay, good, great. There is a few things that I want to try to do here before I fully go into the rest of what I need to do. I want to try to fix up her face a little bit more. Because her eyelashes do make it a tad bit difficult to try to, you know, do certain things here. I'll probably make them a bit brighter then. Brighten the eyelashes from below. And then I could probably add in a little sunken eye texture here. There we go. And you... I feel like most of you should be fine now that I fixed your eyebrow. Okay, so there's their little effects in their weaponry. Now we just get to the part where we finish the drawing off. And to do so, I need to go and get the... No, hold on. I need to go on ahead and get the shadows in. This one's going to be a little tricky. Oh, I should probably put this in the creatures section, actually, because the creatures are above everything. I mean, we obviously don't need shadows around the... the things with bright effects, so we won't add them there. Alright, let's get this set up. I think the idea here is to get this a nice yellowish appearance. The, uh, drawing a nice yellowish appearance. You will see if we succeed. And the uh, thumbnail. Well, you've already seen it, actually. Oof. Not sure what I'm doing after this. <clears throat> actually, it all depends on how long it takes me to get this done with. I'm definitely going to try to get this posted, though. The, the video, of course, not the drawing. Posted bef tonight before Sunday begins, or yesterday, before today begins. <laughs> Time, shish. So, pro well, I mean, Nova Guardians just take ages to freaking publish, so. Technically, it wouldn't matter. Because technically, by the time I'm done writing the story, the, the, the things will be done. And we don't need that. To like that. That's what you gotta take into consideration there. It takes several hours to write an entire episode of Nova Guardians. Break it up in the four chapters and making it go out until we get to about 55 kilobytes worth. It's a lot of work. Unlike all the other series, Nova Guardians is a lot larger in the sense that the episodes are longer, at least text-wise. I don't know if 55 kilobytes can be the same amount, because sometimes a 22-minute uh, read-and-imagine story might have a much larger file size compared to another one that, you know, has certain, like, descriptors and whatnot. <clears throat> Honestly, the only reason why I had, like, uh, Nova Guardians go for as big as it has with uh, 55 kilobytes was because of the first episode. 
The first episode was uh, big, and I couldn't fit all that I wanted to get fit into there on a 22-minute read and imagine, plus that wasn't really what I had in mind in the first place. So, at the end of the day, I just had to keep writing until we finished getting, you know, all the stuff and we would reach our limits. Now, I've kind of just am going for 55 as a solid amount. <clears throat> because, again, 60 is apparently a limit. Once DeviantArt hits 60, it can't go any further. It's 64, technically speaking, but there are some instances and tidbits in there that makes it so that that 64 turns into a 60. I don't know why. I'm not sure why. Or 64 turns into an unable to post. Uh, I'm tired. Again, like I've stated several dozen times throughout my YouTube lack of career. I am tired. I can't help it. I have to create, make things, make progress, and do what I need to do. Once this is finished, and once we've gotten um, the story posted, the only thing left is landscapes and scenery drawing, and then we start working on September. I would like to get more things finished, but I don't have that kind of time. <clears throat> it sucks. It really does. If I could just go on ahead and give myself more time, that'd be great. But, you know, at the very least, with Saturday being can whoopses. With Saturday being cancelled in work because of people not showing up. <clears throat> I don't know. I mean, I the original plan was when I got home to record Sonic Adventures 2 and try to get a head start on the Heather drawing. And then when my shows come on, I get a head start on that by watching a fairy tale first go through it, then watch Demon Slayers, and then try to finish off this drawing. But so far, we've been at this for an hour and a half. So we we would have probably been fine, but I, you know, regardless. Then Sunday came where we call out, or maybe we don't even need to call out, because again, no label, or no la uh, op winders are going to show up. I would hope so, but I will definitely try to wake up at 12, call the call out line and ask a sit rep on what's occurring. Uh, who called out, or is, is there any need for me to go in there? And if there is, I'll just go on ahead and use a sick day and then, you know, work on this from 12. Well, not from 12. Well, it depends on my fully. <clears throat> One thing's for certain, I'm definitely not coming in on normal time. Or, I'm not definitely not coming in. So, no doubt about it. My creations right now are more important, and I have to get this done with on a Sunday. Hell, if I can start it early, then that would be great. Uh, fuck it. Hold on. Get rid of the fire, because the fire isn't needed. Probably gonna have to get rid of a few other things. I already did you... Man, there's so many shadow-based things that I gotta do here. At least with, like, Yasashi and Shikama, they don't need that much shadow work. Because most of their color designs is dark. And if you look at their designs, they're a bit more of a darker team. Purple, blue, that kind of color hue scheme. Well, you got Tina over here whose colors are popping. Tina do be popping off, though, I must say. Did I already do, Tina? I did. Good. Okay, John is next. With uh, his new pistol, which I don't... Am I going to be able to make 25 different pistol designs? No clue. Mm, whoops. Oh, I could probably just delete the bits of shadows that are occurring on that side. There's no biggie. Matter of fact, I could probably do that right now. I think I'm done with this. Uh, anything else... That I might need to delete. Delete the things around this. Delete the things around that. Delete the things around that. And that uh, should be good, question mark? At least for you guys. Alright. Oh, I need to lay back so my back ain't curving. 
Oh, you idiot. Shadows. Blurf. Uh, let's see. Let's uh, see. Ye. Um, it's hard to tell with the dust clouds here where everything's at. Let me look at this real quick. Yeah, I had a feeling. I had a feeling that that was going that far out. You're not gonna meow, you're just gonna look at me. What's wrong, Momo? How long have we had this so far? Yeah, we're still doing good. If complete this in less than two hours would be great. I don't know what else, because I, I, there's not much more I can do after this. With the short amount of time that I have, there's not much more that I can do. Get this done with, record an episode of Game Crafters after my shows. Relax for a few hours. Prepare for this episode. Yeah, that's that's my plan. I don't think I need to do anything more there. All right, time for some fog. Because of the way everything is set up here, I'm able to separate things a bit better. All right, so what should you look like? A bright yellow. That could work. All right, we go to the creatures in the back. Or do we just go for these guys over here? A bright yellow, a nice green, but don't have the sky be fully green at least. Go over to the background, and a nice teal fog. Now I want Hmm, maybe not teal. I don't know exactly what would I what would look good here. A blue? Yeah, maybe. I mean, I don't have to do it like filling in the entire thing. I could just go on ahead, figure out what kind of shade of light blue I can put in the back here, if there is any. Man, you can barely see that one. Or that one. Okay, how about a light purple? I'm not getting a good color scheme with that. This one looks pretty good so far. Now I can have a nice yellow up top here. We up top here. Okay, good. Whoops, now for the sun rays. Where are you? Lighting. There we are. Alright, let's see here. I guess that could work. A nice light color. And you see these four trying to help them out by going after this, going after that, going after this, and going after what's in front of or what's in front of them? I mean, that's what a ranger. Whoops! That's what a ranger can do. Go out from afar and attack from afar. A good gun could pierce through most creatures' armored shell, which can be very useful if you're trying to kill a creature that's very dangerous and is causing a problem for the entirety of the area.
Hmm, I do wonder, though. You could see a planet in the sky. You can see a moon at night. You can see a planet, or a moon in the day. You can see a planet in the day, too. So I wonder if I could put a planet here. It wouldn't really serve too much of a purpose outside of just a cool planet high up in the sky over here. Captain Planet. Planet. I'm going to try to put a planet in here. I don't know where this would be. I guess I guess I could just put no. I guess I could just put it in the planes. It's not a planet you can only see in the planes. It's just a planet that you are seeing in the planes right now. And that's why it's there. Green pl planet. Just I'm not giving it a name right now. I'm just calling it a green planet. Isn't there like a sonic level called Green Planet, or am I thinking of something else? Hold on, I'm gonna look it up. Mm, green Planet Sonic. Oh, there's Green Gate. Well, there's something out there that's reminding me of uh, a game name, I just don't know what. There we are. All right, let's get some nice lines up in here. At 10 this time around. Um, let's go on and grab some of this. Oh, that's a highlight. Well, highlight still works too. I got like nice little continent looking things. Now I can go on ahead and do a little something with this. Oops. Mm -hmm. oh, I was probably put it at like 20 or something. A planet with yellow water. Oh, it's not water if it's yellow. Green planet water. Or at least some kind of liquid. Alright, let's see here. Rotate that a little bit. There we go. Now we're going to go on ahead and make it 50. And delete part of the back side. Whatever this planet is, it's close to the planet that they live on. I'm going ahead and make an overlay as well if I want to. Not overlay, the overlay. Vivid lighting. It does kind of make a difference. Okay, cool, that works. Now it doesn't even look like a green planet, it looks like a water planet. I gotta say, the planet at Leofarn definitely has interesting and unique environments. If you've seen all of them, you've seen what they're like. Marshland, there's a volcanic land, and we got plains over here. Barren fields. If it wasn't filled with hostile alien creatures that are going to do everything within their power to myrtleize you, this would be a cool place to live. Oh, and, and if it wasn't for the corrupt, the, the corrupt nature of the Nova Guardians higher ups, it probably would also be a, a, an even better place. At least you know, assuming you're not an alien and criminal. If you've seen the ninth episode, and if you read it. I have a little hint of what I have planned. I'm not going to say too much about it, but you have a little hint. Keep this hint in mind. The ninth one might seem like a filler, but it has an 
overlaying over uh, foreshadowing event that occurs in the series. You're probably not going to see it yet until episode 12, I believe. So two episodes left, as you can clearly see, number in case you don't know no Ro Roman numerals. Roman numerals can be a pain in the ass to remember sometimes, but it shouldn't be. It's just my brain don't remember most of it. The I's are the digits of ones. The V's are the digits of fives. And the X's are the digits of tens. With L's being the digits of fifties, apparently. You can only have three of one type. The thing is, I don't know if you can have three of fours. No. Wait, you can only have one. Well, actually, it depends. Because in the most recent ep episodes of uh, Adventurous Army... Wait, X, V... Ah, oh, Christ, I got it. It's hard to remember. Because the X means it's a ten. If you have another X, it's a two Xs, and then that is an X... What was it? I, two Is, three Is, an I, and a V... Then a V, and a V, and an I, and a V, and an I, and another I, and the other instance, and then a third I, and eight. And then one and an X for nine, and X for ten, X and one for eleven, X and two ones for twelve, three for the uh, three, and then you're basically just restarting back with uh, fourteen, so the X. But with all of those up until you get to nineteen, which is then X, I, X, and then it's X, X, and then it keeps going and restarts again until it gets to I, L? Or is it... No, because that wouldn't make sense. X, 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 I, L wouldn't make any... No, wait a far. X, X, X is 30. X, 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 X. So you can have four X's. Look, Roman numerals can be a pain in the ass to remember. I am going to go through the entire Roman numeral alphabet. Or the number alphabets of the Roman numerals. I don't even know what the hell their thought process was when it comes to making that, because, you know... I mean, I guess most of it does kind of fit into your favor. And it's not like anything here is ever going to hit the XXXX... No, XXX... XXXX... BIII... I. Eight. That's so freaking many. That's eight. Eight right there. And that is, I believe, 48. And then once you get to 49, it should go to I and L, correct? I-L? I-R-L? In case y'all don't know Roman numerals and you're wondering why it says episode X. I don't know why I've done Roman numerals. I also have numbers. Some of them don't have numbers, though, like uh, Elementals Reborn. God damn it, go to background, you fool. Elementals Reborn only has Roman numerals, I believe. I don't think it has any numbers that I remember. I mean, I could just go and look it up, you know? Do 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 do. Yep, nope, just V-I-I-I, -I -I. there's no numbers there. Because Heavenly Dead, yeah, Heavenly Deadland also has the, uh, the numbers in the top right and top left, even for season one and season two. And it's still got the Roman numeral on the bottom. Heavenly Deadland is taking inspirations from Nova Guardian's entire setup by having, well, first of all, it has this up here and giving me more room to create, draw stuff and has more pixels. And it has stuff here and here, but separated and small. You can tell that Nova Guardians I only plan on doing one season of. I don't know if I would ever make a second season. I feel like I could at some point, but I think with Nova Guardians complexity, it's best to leave that as a single season kind of thing. Oh, with the amount of writing it has in it, it's two it's like two seasons in of itself. Four, depending on what your type what your definition of a season is. Oh, my computer is having a hard time trying to keep up with the complexity of all of this. Don't worry, computer. We are almost done. Once we're done with this, we can call it a day. 
Well, until we do an episode of Game Crafters, but that's Sunday, so technically, it's the truth. But, and like I said, sometimes my day, Sunday doesn't begin for me until I sleep on Saturday and whatnot. That's not, I mean, that is green teal. Or no, that's a light green effect. Let me do teal first. I want to get some teal in here, and I want to get some green in here. And I want mostly lights. Like, you know, yellow and light orange. Alright, so time for the light green to come to play. All right, now it's time for the yellow to come into play. Nice, bright colors. All right, now we're going to get our light yellow in here, even though I don't think this is called a light yellow. What is this called again? Yeah, just yellow effect. That is not overlay. I should at some point try to experiment with uh, other things. Vivid lighting. Actually, we, we should experiment with it. Why not? Light purple area. I'll do overlay as the default. But, if I feel as though that overlay isn't what I want, we can look around and see. So, that's soft. That's hard. That's so hard. Go down. Vivid lighting. That's a bit too vivid. Linear lighting. That's a bit too bright. Pin light. Differences is not going to look good. Use not gonna look good, chat range not gonna look good, color not gonna look good, luminosity is not gonna look good. I mean I could definitely see some cool things with it. Wait, also what was the one that that one color did? So I can get a nice Ooh. There's a specific drawing idea that I have in mind that I technically could do as soon as next year begins, and I kinda do want to do it. Linear dodge, color dodge, screen, lighten. Linear burn, color burn. Color burn could probably look cool for some horror based stuff, so I could probably experiment with at least color burn. Multiply, darken, dissolve. Ooh, never gonna look good unless I have something that requires me to do white noise. Which I guess might work. I think overlay looks good with this one. Alright, let's get some light, oops, light orange in here now. I'm also going to need some regular old orange. And maybe not up in the sky, maybe like mostly back here. Alright, now let's see. Soft light, hard light, vivid light, linear light, pin light. You know, overlay still looks good. So I guess it depends. The light yellow looked cool as vivid light. Making most of that area kind of bright and vivid. Alright, I need an orange area for Fry's sword. Nice little, like, orange area with a nice glow to it. Soft light, hard, soft, hard, vivid, linear. I do kind of like linear a bit. Like, okay, I do. I could reduce a little bit of the linear light here and here. Keep most of that around here. And then going ahead. Okay, good. Nah, you did it. I thought you weren't going to do it. Cyan area. We could do a cyan area, which we one of the hard lights or... Linear and pins might work, look good for this one. I have a dull blue effect that I can use here. Or, again, I could use cyan. And we can use the vivid light changes. 
Oh, even cyan. Even where it is right now, it by itself looks good. Not bad, I must say. But let's try out the other one. Soft. Soft looks pretty cool. Hard. Too much. Vivid. Not gonna lie, that vivid does look pretty cool. Linear and pen. Pen also looks pretty cool. Yeesh difference. I'm not gonna try that. Pen, vivid, soft. Overlay. Overlay compared to pen. Okay. Overlay compared to vivid. Okay. Soft. Overlay compared. No, we already did that. Overlay compared to soft, because we can just do that. Can you even see this? It's very subtle. I like that, though. Something about that looks cool. There's one thing I could do, though. It's delete a little bit around the creature's, you know, mandibles and bodies and whatnot, and also make it so that the vivid lighting doesn't go too far into it. Okay, good. Now I have a teal area, another teal area, but this one's more so just going to be used for this girl's uh, weaponry, which this might be fine. It depends, because this is dull. Whoops. Unless I want to do, like, a light, vivid green color. Or a light blue color. All right, let's see. Soft light, hard light, vivid light looks good, though. Linear light, pen light. Actually, linear light looks good for this one. They both kind of look the same. Vivid, linear, vivid, linear. Something about linear looks better. I, I can't describe it. Wait. Right about here. Linear, vivid. Linear, vivid. Yeah, I can see it. You can see it right here. I pointed to it like you, you could see that, but you couldn't. Light pink, or not light pink, just pink. We don't have light pink. Pink is already light as is. And what about you? A nice little pink bit. Your weaponry is kind of simplistic in the sense that it doesn't have a lot of effects that can really make it pop. Maybe it's too much, linear is too much, and pin light's not good enough. I like the overlay for that better. Yeah, you gotta learn what would look good. Hard to do when you don't really have a lot of experience with those particular types of swatches. Is that it? Or can I add more? I could probably add like a nice dark blue effect surrounding most of the area here. Like right here. There's a little bit of darkness. Here, here, and here. Now we can add in our sepia, our little 50% vivid overlay. That one's kind of just been a staple for the entirety of this one. I don't think it could ever be anything but an opacity of 50% with vivid lights and dull colors. All right, I need some nice yellow. Is that too much yellow? Oh, that one actually looks pretty good. I could definitely at least put some of this yellow in here. I don't want to inundate the sky with yellow, though. Let me see if I can get some green in the sky as well. A mixture of yellows and greens, basically. Let me see if I can get a nice teal area around most of the area. Not too much now. Nice little orange area down here, and a nice little pink area around. Bits and pieces of the characters' colors and auras. If anything, I could probably put like some yellow around here. Here and here. That one looks good for these guys. Try to keep some of that dull yellow around the central portion. And have a lot of the focus be on these guys up here. And I believe that's all. All I gotta do now is just reset all of my 
brush tools and whatnot back to where they're supposed to be. And that's it. We've been at this for how long? Almost two hours. Damn. So with effects, without effects, with effects, without effects, so on and so forth. So that's all for today, folks. With that being said, thank you all for watching today's episode of Art Time. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like, subscribe for more. Check out that there plays. And of course, Previous episode of Art Time right over here and the most recent episode of Tales of Viserion right over here. Anyways, thank you all for watching. I will see you all in the next episode. Later.